In this video, you can see dozens of ships waiting at the sea. But why are they stuck like this? This drone footage is from the Panama Canal, and the reason for this traffic jam is a severe drought that began last year and is now threatening the multi-million maritime trade. In August of last year, more than 200 ships waited across this highly coveted path, with some paying millions of dollars to skip the waiting line. Panama handles roughly 5% of the global sea trade and 40% of the U.S. trade, carrying around $270 billion worth of cargo that flows through the Atlantic Pacific annually. The drop in water levels allows only 24 ships to pass per day as opposed to 40 ships on a regular day. This has resulted in delayed shipments, more fuel usage, and GDP losses to the trading nations. The Panama Canal is a 100-plus year engineering feat that connects two huge oceans, the Atlantic and the Pacific. As its name indicates, the canal is located in Panama, a tiny country that joins Northern and Southern America. Before the introduction of this canal, if any ship wanted to cross the two oceans, it had two options. It has to go all the way around Cape Horn, the tip of Southern America, or through the Strait of Magellan, a small waterway in Chile. As you can expect, this journey wasn't only long but also dangerous and spanned up to several months. Over the years, many rulers had to find a shortcut route linking the two great seas and facilitating trade. The successful opening of the Suez Canal in 1869 gave people and engineers the confidence that such a feat could be repeated. Colombia, France, and later the United States controlled the territory surrounding the canal during construction. France began work on the canal in the late 1800s, but stopped because of a lack of investors' confidence, engineering problems, and a high worker mortality rate. The U.S. took over the project in 1904 and opened the canal in 1914. Until 1999, the canal was jointly controlled by both the U.S. and Panama when it was completely transferred to the Panamanian government. It is now managed and operated by the government-owned Panama Canal Authority. By 2021, net income from the canal reached $2 billion, about 3% of Panama's GDP. There's no doubt that the canal is a prized national item that has a lot of geostrategic and economic potential. But sadly, its current state of affairs tells a sorry tale. The canal is currently suffering a prolonged drought that began in early 2023 and has not let up. In October, rainfall was 43% lower than average levels, making it the driest October since the 1950s. The year 2023 was one of the driest years recorded ever since record-keeping began in the country. The culprit of this phenomenon is a climate pattern called El Nino which is responsible for unusual warming of surface waters in the tropical Pacific Ocean. This period can last between 9 to 12 months, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, predicts it'll continue at least until April 2024. The severity of El Nino is also linked to the climate crisis caused by high emissions in the past years. If these emissions go unchecked, El Nino events could become 15 to 20 percent stronger, bringing more trouble than ever for the vulnerable Panama. Water levels in the artificial Gatun Lake sit at six feet lower than they should. Millions of gallons of water from Gatun, along with other regional lakes, are used to fill the logs that raise ships above sea level for passage over Panama's terrain. One ship requires at least 200 million liters or 52 million gallons of fresh water in a single passing. Okay, but why does it require so much water to pass? That's because the Panama Canal is an artificial waterway that uses a set of locks to transport cargo vessels. Thousands of workers had to dig through land to create space for two artificial lakes, Gatun Lake and Lake Maden. But where did the water come from? Engineers built dams on an inland river called the Chagres River that created a water reservoir and hence the Panama Canal. The canal contains 12 locks that raise the incoming ships to the level of Lake Gatun, which is 85 feet above sea level. The second set of locks lowers the ship on the other side to match the sea level. So in short, it's almost like a system of escalators that lift and lower the vessels on either side. The current lack of water isn't just a problem for the global trade. The Panama Canal Authority also supplies drinking water for half the country's population, including the residents of the capital, Panama City. 
With stakes so high, what's the Panama Canal Authority doing to ease this situation? An $8.5 billion plant is being developed at the moment that could replenish water levels in the next five years and ensure smooth maritime trade for the future. The canal authority is reusing water from one lock chamber to another, saving the equivalent of six daily crossings. This is obviously a short-term solution, but there are bigger and more complex options on the cards too. The authority is considering damming up the nearby Indio River and then drilling a tunnel through the mountain. This tunnel will transport freshwater five miles into Lake Gatun, the canal's main reservoir. The new Indio Reservoir would increase vessel traffic by 11 to 15 a day, enough to keep Panama's top moneymaker at working capacity while guaranteeing fresh water for Panama City. It will take at least six years to dam up and fill the site. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is conducting a feasibility study. But this step will be anything but easy. The dam will need congressional approval and thousands of farmers and ranchers whose lands would be flooded for the reservoir are already organizing to oppose it. It's not the first time that Panamanian residents have protested against infrastructural development. Last year, protesters have regularly blocked roads to oppose the Canadian copper mine from operating. Many view this $10 billion industry as an ecological disaster and resource exploitation at the hands of foreign powers. So any kind of project by the government is sure to hit the raw nerve. Another option is to build desalination plants. The lack of rain has increased the salinity of the lakes and rivers, a challenge that has to be managed given it's the country's biggest source of potable water. But that option's costly and removing salt from seawater requires a huge amount of energy. A more futuristic yet a little unrealistic alternative is cloud seeding. This process implants large salt particles into clouds to boost rainfall. Cloud seeding is an idea that has existed since the 1940s, so it isn't new, but it has mostly been deployed successfully in dry climates, not in tropical countries like Panama. To make matters worse, a new set of larger locks called the Neo Panamax were built in 2016. This was done to keep up with the increasing traffic and the growing size of cargo ships. Although these locks save 60% of the water, the Canal Authority should have made a new reservoir to pump in enough fresh water. As much as a headache as the canal seems to be, its construction was a bigger headache. Hundreds of millions of dollars were spent on its construction and thousands of workers lost their lives in the process. The project was the brainchild of a French diplomat named Ferdinand de la Sip, who was also the developer of the famous Suez Canal. He and his team were able to raise considerable funds in France as a result of the huge profits generated by the Suez Canal. Even though the Panama Canal is only 40% as long as the Suez, it was a bigger engineering challenge because of its location in the tropical rainforest and the various diseases that followed. Lesep wanted a sea-level canal like that of the Suez, but he visited the site only a few times during the dry season, which lasts only four months of the year. His men were unprepared for the rainy season, during which the Chagre River became a raging torrent rising to 33 feet. But the worst challenge was the frequent death of workers due to yellow fever, malaria, and other tropical diseases. The dense jungle was alive with venomous snakes, insects, and spiders, further risking worker safety. The condition was downplayed in France to avoid public outrage, but it was difficult to maintain an experienced workforce due to the high mortality rate. The steel equipment rusted quickly due to the rainy climate and other electric and mechanical equipment were limited. Soon after, it was obvious that the Panama Canal was nowhere to be and the project went bankrupt. An estimated $287 million was lost in addition to 22,000 men from disease and accidents. The hard-earned savings of more than 800,000 investors were lost in what became known as the Panama Affair. A trial was called and Ferdinand de Lesseps, his son and Gustave Eiffel, yup, that's the man behind the Eiffel Tower, were found guilty. Fast forward to 1903, when the U.S. actively helped Panama gain independence from Colombia by sending its troops. Panama promptly declared independence on November 3, 1903. The U.S. quickly recognized the new nation, but as history's taught us, there's no such thing as a free lunch. That's why Panama had to transfer the canal zone rights to the U.S. In 1904, the U.S. purchased French equipment and excavations, including the Panama Railroad, for $40 million. The U.S. inherited poor infrastructure and equipment from France and had to modernize much of the surroundings by building hotels, 
cafeterias, housing, warehouses, and other structures to encourage workers to come and work here. By 1906, it was discovered that the sea level approach was unsuitable, and the engineers suggested a system of locks to raise and lower ships from a large reservoir. This forced the U.S. to build the Gatun Dam and the artificial Gatun Lake, the largest of their kind at the time. Finally, in 2014, the Panama Canal was built, solidifying the position of the U.S. in the global arena and providing a shortcut for the cargo vessels. Now, almost a century later, this engineering marvel is in serious jeopardy that might persist in the upcoming years. But fortunately, the world is already devising solutions for the Panama problem. Cashing in on the opportunity, Mexico has announced an interoceanic corridor connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans through ports of Cuesta Locosos and Salina Cruz. The corridor will carry freight trains that can help ease the burden of the already strained Panama Canal. We've created a video on this topic, so if you're interested, you can click on the i button and watch it now. That's it for today. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, smash the like and subscribe button to show your support. Do you think that the Panama Canal can be saved? Share your take with us in the comments. Is there any other project we should cover on this channel? Mention them below, and we'll see you on the next video.